Local 3 Traffic, presented by CHI Memorial. New Year, New Career. CHI Memorial offers patient care tech training for those who want to start a career in the medical field. Apply at memorial.org slash careers. Traffic looking A-OK -okay on this Thursday. Highway 27 coming across the old Johnny Bridge in the downtown Chattanooga. No accidents to slow you down. We'll keep you up to speed on traffic conditions throughout the morning right here on Local 3 News Today. It's been a couple of years since Savannah held its St. Patrick's Day celebration, a parade that they usually have, but the signature event will return in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's right. COVID-19 canceled the parade. Uh, said by some to be the biggest outside of New York City last year and the year before. Danny Powers will be the 2022 Savannah St. Patrick's Parade Grand Marshal. The 198th Savannah St. Patrick's Day Parade will kick off at 1015 a.m. on Thursday, March 17th in downtown Savannah. Looks like that's going to be a good time. Yep. <laughs> If you're at it out the door, don't forget the news continues all day inside our app. Uh, Local 3 News Today continues right now. This is Local 3 News Today. Well, a Hamilton County Commissioner is calling for DA Neil Pinkston to resign. Angela Kim joins us with that story. Plus, Caroline Corgan will tell us how people who would like to donate to help Ukraine can make sure their money is going to those who really need it. We'll have details just ahead. Oh, happy Thursday morning. Some like to call it Friday Eve. They sure do. My name is John Martin. Some being John Martin over here. Hey, hey, more than me call it Friday <laughs> it's Eve. It's okay. We like it because it feels like we're getting closer to the weekend. And it's, it's a gonna celebration. Be, yeah, it's going to be beautiful. We've had a good looking week and that sunshine and uh, warm weather is going to continue, Allison. It sure is. So today's going to be another gorgeous day. If you like the warm air, today is the day for you. We ended up reaching 79 degrees yesterday. Uh, today, I'm forecasting a high of 78. So yes, sunny and warm again. So head outside if and when you can and enjoy it. Tomorrow it'll be mostly sunny for Friday. So a lot of sunshine in the morning time, but clouds gradually increasing Friday afternoon into the evening. And those clouds are basically going to linger around and be with us for the weekend. So do expect more clouds for the weekend, but It'll still be warm in the 70s for both Saturday and Sunday. Just a couple of spotty shower chances. So overall, I think you still have through Sunday that you can enjoy being outside. More significant rain when well, that returns on Monday of next week. Now we're starting off this morning, kind of a combination of 30s and 40s across the area. 44 in Chattanooga, you'll notice a little bit warmer up along the plateau, so a slight temperature inversion. So the higher elevations are actually warmer than some of our valley spots. 49 in Altamont versus 39 in Cleveland. Off to the east in Cherokee County, some of the coolest air, so 34 degrees in Murphy. Here's a check of your day planner for this Thursday. So the biggest temperature break, well, that's going to happen during the morning time hours. So 46 at 8 a.m., but notice four hours later, by noon, we're over 20 degrees warmer than that. So already 69 degrees at noon. So it's going to be comfortable for having maybe that lunch outside, eat on the patio, go to a restaurant that has some outdoor seating, and then certainly warm temperatures for this afternoon, hanging out in the 70s all afternoon long. Those highs across the area, mid to upper 70s. I think we're going to top out at 78 degrees here in Chattanooga. Friday, back down to the low 70s, but again, that's still well above what's normal. Our normal is 60 degrees. So 73 on Friday. The weekend, we're still going to be dealing with the 70s and Monday as well, 74, but notice that 70% chance of rainfall. So some scattered showers during the daytime on Monday, but especially Monday evening, more widespread rain sweeping through. We'll take a look at that for a future cast and of course the rest of the seven day forecast coming up in about 15 minutes. Thank you very much for that uh, positivity right there. Yeah. That's good stuff. Your headlines in this six o'clock hour, hours before Hamilton County District Attorney Neil Pinkston officially announced he was running for re-election. A commissioner called on him to resign. Local 3's Angela Kim has some details from a new complaint that was just made public. Angela, what does it say? Hey, uh, John, Lori, good morning to both of you. Yes, this is a 46 page complaint that was recently made public and in it essentially shows that Pinkston's wife and her, her brother were not included in the department's salary when it comes to listing all of that last year. And then this year he went to request $100,000 to pay their salaries on top of that. Now, a Tennessee Comptroller investigation found that to be in direct violation of the state nepotism law. Boyd asked Pinkston about it during budget hearings in May, and an elected official cannot employ a relative to report to them. But the investigation found no favoritism towards Pinkston's wife or her brother, and they both have since been placed on paid leave. And I asked him on more than one occasion, did he understand the State Nepotism Act? And he said he did. 
Well, obviously he did not. Now, the, comp the complaint also notes discrepancies in titles, saying Pinkston's wife is listed as an information officer and her brother as a secretary, but according to the complaint, they were initially referred to as his chief of staff and an investigator. Now, of course, we did reach out to Pinkston for a statement on this story. A spokesperson did get back to Local 3 and tell us uh, that they are not interested in commenting on this subject or on this story. Reporting in Chattanooga, Angela Kim, Local 3 News. Right. Angela, thank you very much for that update. In the race for the Hamilton County District Attorney, Pinkston faces two challengers. He will first face Cody Womp in the Republican primary in May, and then in August, the winner will face John Allen Brooks, a Democrat. Hamilton County Mayor Jim Coppinger called on all candidates to remember there's more at stake than just the reputation of the person running and to consider everyone's families and the county's repu reputation as a whole. He added, what happens to one elected official impacts them all. No one, no one should ever take any pleasure in someone being in trouble or making a misstep. All of us up here are pulling for Hamilton County in a positive direction. And when we have an elected person that's got problems, that's a reflection on all of us. I mean, the fact that a reminder, early voting for the primary begins April 13th. Russia's invasion into Ukraine has led to as many as 2,000 civilian deaths just in the past week. That is according to Ukrainian officials. We are now one week since the first attack on Ukraine and Russian troops are heading to the capital city. Pictures and videos of people fleeing Ukraine have touched the hearts of people across the world. Yeah, Caroline Corgan joins us live in the studio to tell us how you can donate and make sure it's going to a trusted organization because Caroline, when there's situations like this, unfortunately, the wolves do come out. Yes, you're exactly right. The Better Business Bureau has a list of accredited charities who are either currently raising funds for assistance efforts in Ukraine or preparing for possible needs. A few things to keep in mind if you're preparing to make a donation. President Michelle Mason says you should never follow a donation link sent by email, text, or something you saw on social media. And when you make your payment, you should use a credit card. Mason says it's the most secure way to do so. If this should turn out to be a bogus offer that you're supporting, you have a way to work with your financial institution to address that. Now we have posted more information inside our app about a few tips to keep in mind before you hit submit, guys. Yeah, always good information just to remind people because again, unfortunately, there are people who like to um, prey on others uh, with a good spirit. And a good yeah, idea. and there are some good legitimate organizations Absolutely. out there doing the right thing. So just keep that in mind yeah. if you're looking to make a donation. 606 is your time coming up on Local 3 News today. A few local high school basketball teams took a step towards the state tournament last night. And Bobic has your highlights next in sports.
The light is near the end of the long, long tunnel that is the Tennessee High School basketball playoffs. Region championship games being contested on Wednesday on the girls side. Just one step closer to finally getting to the state tournament in Murfreesboro. We start in double A as District 4 champion Polk County gears up for a major test as they take on District 3 champ McMinn Central. Led by legendary head coach Johnny Morgan. He's won a region title or two in his day. Hey, I saw this skill firsthand this last week. Molly Massengale, the horse seen around the lum, doing what she does, getting back of that dominant left hand and finishing. Chargerettes were up big, but Polk County starts to knock down some threes. First, it's Miranda Clark from the wing as the Lady Cats cut into that lead. Next time, it's Callie Brewer, who's buckets from downtown. And she's fired up, too. She says, come on, ladies. Let's get it going. High-scoring first half. Brilliant take from Kellen Baker, the layup maker. Just patience and a quick cut for two. Speaking of cuts, beautiful backdoor cut from Brewer here as Courtney Farr finds her for two. McMinn Central just too quick on the responses, and they built that lead up enough as Karina Bystreet gets two. The Chargerettes get that home sub-state game as they win the region title 71-60. to The Lady Wildcats will go on the road in the sub-state, but still alive. Up the road in Dunlap, the Whitwell Lady Tigers looking to bring home a region title in a district championship rematch against Van Buren. And listen, this little guy's credit, he almost made it to halftime. Boy, is this a mood. And don't worry, we'll let you know who won in the morning, big dog. Van Buren heating up late in the first quarter. You can't leave the girl with the tightly, tightly knotted braids open like this. It's a rule of thumb. Emily Allen for three. Whitwell looking to stop the bleeding. Best way to do it, he'll make some shots. Addie Colvard says, say no more, fam. Here's one triple, and you know what? Eh, what the heck? She'll take another. Back-to-back -back Colvard threes at the Lady Tigers buzzing. So how about this? Colvard with a rope up court on the move to Jamie Rollins who throws up the fake then hits the baseline runner. Incredible touch from Rollins. We see you girl. Whitwell just gets red hot in the second quarter. Dialing up the press and hitting triples. Lily Dzingelski with the three. Lady Tigers take what's theirs and that's a single A region three title 54 to 47. They'll host the sub-state game Saturday for a trip to the glass house. Some more scores from Wednesday night. The East Hamilton girls Come oh so close to a region title as they fall by three at home. They'll go on the road in the sub-state for a seventh straight time. You guessed it, the Bradley Central Barretts are region champs with a double-digit win over McMinn County. Both will get their chance to get to Murfreesboro. And how about the Calhoun Yellow Jackets down in Georgia? Officially final four bound. This is the boys too, by the way, in 5A with a win at home. They'll play at Ford Valley State on Saturday with a trip to the title game on the line. Also on the line this weekend in Asheville, the Southern Conference Tournament Championship. We're hitting the road today. We'll see you at four courtside inside the Harris Cherokee Center where the Chattanooga Mox women's team will be battling Furman at 545. Preview with them, post game with them. The men play Saturday. Hopefully the women win and we'll play again Friday. We're going to be there all weekend and we cannot wait. Local three, the place to be for everything Mox in Asheville. More sports. I know you want it online at local3news.com or inside our app. Happy Thursday, folks. We hope you have a lovely, lovely day. Hey, and real quick, I just wanted to uh, make a comment about this. Malachi Smith for UTC, SOCON Player of the Year. Yes. Lamont Paris, head coach for the UTC Mocs, Coach of the Year in the SOCON. So an absolutely wonderful regular season for the Mocs. And again, we applaud them and wish them best as they head to Asheville, North Carolina, with Ben Bobin. It's going to be a great weekend. We'll let you know how it all turns out coming up on Local 3 News today. We are looking forward to more sunny skies and warm temperatures today. Meteorologist Allison Pryor will have your full Thursday forecast next.
Local 3 Traffic, presented by CHI Memorial. New Year, New Career. CHI Memorial offers patient care tech training for those who want to start a career in the medical field. Apply at memorial.org slash careers. Hey, it's quarter after 6 o'clock on this Friday Eve. If you're getting out and about, things are looking good on the roadways. There's not a whole lot of activity in general, but 24 at West Side Drive. All the cars and trucks making it up and down the ridge cut without any accidents to slow them down. We'll keep you up to speed on your traffic conditions throughout the morning right here on Local 3 News Today. Right now, though, we're going to turn our attention back to the forecast and the challenge. How many different ways can you say it's going to be beautiful outside? I know. Allison? I'm trying to just utilize all those adjectives. Fantastic, gorgeous, glorious. We're continuing with all of that for the day today. It is cool this morning, but not super cold. So you will notice a combination of 30s and 40s across the area. Dalton, Chattanooga, Dayton will continue to be in the 40s. You'll notice further off to the east in the 30s and also 36 degrees currently in Fort Payne. No wind at this time. As we look at our hour by hour forecast, temperatures are going to warm up really quickly during the morning time. We have dry air in place at any time you have that dry air. That's when you get that bigger temperature spread from morning into the afternoon. So notice by 11 AM, we're already going to be at 65 degrees and then afternoon temperatures today, certainly in the 70s across the area. Overall, those highs in the mid to upper 70s. This is well above what is normal for this time of year. And just like yesterday, and the day before that abundant sunshine all day long. Once the sun sets about 630 PM this evening, it'll drop back down into the 60s. So by 7 o'clock tonight, sitting at 69 degrees. So we'll call it kind of official unofficial record watch for the day today. We potentially could get a record high temperature. So I'm forecasting right now 78 degrees for the high. We ended up topping out at 79 yesterday, so we could easily get there again for the day today. Our normal is 60 degrees. That record is 79 and look at the date that that was set way back in 1899. So that's a record that's over 120 years old. We'll be keeping an eye on if we tie it or potentially even break it for the day today. But again, right now going a little bit conservative with that 78. So here's a check of our clouds and radar. Nothing showing up on our local area. Clear skies right now. We do have a cold front just to the north of us, but of course we just saw those hourly temperatures. It's not going to make an impact really dropping our temperatures down. You'll just notice a shift in the wind. So as we go through the day today, starting off from the south at midday wind coming light from the west at about five to ten miles per hour and again this is right at noon time no clouds in our area as we head into this evening that cold front's going to drop over and just bring us a light north breeze during the nighttime hours at about five miles per hour for tomorrow wind shifts right back out of the south once again sunny skies in the morning time and then friday afternoon some clouds will gradually enter our area first some high thin clouds and then kind of increasing becoming a little bit denser as we head into friday night but no green showing up on future cast. So absolutely head out Friday evening and night and enjoy that start to your weekend. The clouds are typically going to be with us for this weekend. So overall Saturday and Sunday, partly sunny. At times you're going to get a little bit more sunshine and blue sky. Other times a few more clouds out there, but both days high temperatures in the 70s, wind coming up from the south. A 10% chance for a spotty shower on Saturday, and I've increased it a little bit on Sunday to a 20% chance for a couple of isolated showers. Overall, though, I would say keep your weekend plans, head outside and enjoy it. The more significant rain, that's going to head our way for Monday. So not a whole lot during the daytime on Monday. I think we'll have a few scattered showers, maybe even some rumbles of thunder. But Monday evening, that's when that more consistent widespread rain is going to pass across our area into early Tuesday morning. This is associated with the cold front. That cold front, what does that mean? Well, Tuesday, it's kind of back to wintertime reality or kind of almost early spring reality for the beginning of March with seasonable temperatures and gradually clearing clouds for your Tuesday. So. For our highs today, again, kind of that record watch, very near record highs, 78 in Chattanooga, Dalton, 77 for Cleveland, 76 in Dayton and 74 in Murphy. And then overnight tonight, another clear night with lows in the low 40s across the area, that light north breeze at five miles per hour. And then tomorrow, most of those highs a little cooler in the low 70s, 73 in Chattanooga, 69 in Altamont and 73 in Fort Payne. Winds from the south at five to 10 miles per hour. We're going to keep those high temperatures in the 70s all the way through Monday. Remember that rain comes through Monday evening with a cold front. Big drop back down Tuesday at 57, Wednesday at 60 degrees. And as we look ahead to the 8 to 10 day outlook, so March 10th through March 16th, most likely near normal, if not potentially below normal temperatures during that period of time. So certainly we are kicking off the month of March with this really warm air, but it's not going to stay that way all month long. In fact, by Tuesday of next week, back to that kind of reality of what we would typically expect for this time of year. Still not bad. No, I mean, we can handle it. I'm going to enjoy the sunshine and the oh, warmth while I can. It has been so nice. This so week. nice. Yeah.
Take, take for, Murphy to the dog I'm park. I'm going for a unifreckle, baby. It's going to be good. <laughs> unifreckle. Yeah. Allison, thank you very much. All right, in other news this morning, Wednesday marked 10 years since several tornadoes ripped through our area in 2012. The strongest was an EF3 long track tornado that went through portions of Hamilton, Bradley, McMinn and Polk counties with winds up to 165 miles per hour. 44 people were injured locally. 15 died across the southeast. The structural damage caused by the 2012 tornado totaled more than $30 million. Hey, if you're looking for a job, several local organizations are hosting hiring events this month. Month. Dalton Public Schools is having their recruitment fair this Saturday. The district is looking to hire several teachers, substitutes, school nutrition workers and more. The fair will be open from 8 to 11 a.m. at Hammond Creek Middle School. And the Chattanooga Lookouts are looking to hire dozens of people to help them out on game days this upcoming season. The team's food and beverage hiring fair is happening next Wednesday on March 9th from 3 until 6 o'clock at AT&T Field. Some of the positions available include ushers, camera operators, ground crew team members, along with several other open spots. If you can't make it to the stadium, you can apply for any of their positions online through the team's website. It's a, a lot of fun. Talk to a lot of people who already went to the previous one yeah. and they were super excited about that. And this is one I'm excited for you, Lori. The Chattanooga Fire Department is now hiring. The department is currently taking applications for the fire cadets for their next fire academy, which is expected to start next January. The 2022 fire academy is currently underway. If you would like to apply, you can email CFD recruiting at Chattanooga.gov. Super important job. Absolutely. 621 is your time. Coming up on Local 3 News today, a local program is working to make sure no child in Hamilton County goes hungry. Yeah, and we're going to share how you can help organizers achieve that goal next. Last year, 13 million children may have experienced food insecurity. And here in Tennessee, one in six kids faces hunger. Those numbers. Well, those numbers inspired a local woman to start a program that tries to make sure no child in Hamilton County goes hungry. More than 200 volunteers arrived yesterday morning to help the Snack Pack Ministry fight food insecurity right here in Hamilton County for their schools. Volunteers fill the room in an assembly line to pack 10,000 bags that will be given to children in need. Well, it starts out getting the food in on crates. We have to go from the crate to the box 
to smaller boxes and we unpack all of the food and put it in tubs and then we set the tubs out on the packing morning and then everybody just goes down the line. It's almost like trick or treat, but you're grabbing your own. <laughs> well, she says they have grown from packing 150 bags per week to around 2,300. You can find more information about the Snack Pack Ministry on our website and inside our app, and they're truly making a difference. A senior at Chattanooga High School Center for Creative Arts received a huge honor. Check this out. Lovely Pulliam has been chosen as a National Girls Inc. Scholar and was awarded a $5,000 scholarship. She was selected for her outstanding academic achievements, community service work, and dedication to Girls Inc. She is one of 27 students selected to receive this scholarship. And you can roll up your sleeve and help save some lives later today. The Chattanooga Fire Department is hosting a blood drive in partnership with Blood Assurance. The entire nation is now facing a blood shortage crisis. Today's drive is happening from 9 until 2 on Amnicola Highway. I guess what time it is, Lori. It's time for salutes, John. We want to say happy birthday to Matthew Millard, who is celebrating today. Hey. The message says we love you so much. Happy birthday, love mom, dad, and little Nathan. Patty, Gizmo, and of course, Nana. Mm -hmm. Happy 50th birthday to Paul. Oh man, we hope you have an amazing day. And happy birthday to Elizabeth Conway from Chattanooga turning 80 years Hi. old today. The salute is from Ashley who says, for the greatest grandmother we could ever have. Congratulations, you're our Bojangles winner this morning. We'll mail you a gift card for a free breakfast on us. And if you were born on March 30, you share a birthday with actress Jessica Biel, who turns 40 today, and Brooklyn Nets guard Kyrie Irving, who turns 30. If you'd like to celebrate someone's big day, make sure to send in your salute at least a week in advance to salutes at, w, uh, at local 3 no. excuse me, oh, com. No. Almost got me. Please include your <laughs> phone number and your address. So you could have gone www. <laughs> I could have. I could have saved myself. Oh, it's all right. It is. 